So as you may be aware, I've had the Lexmoto Assault on loan from uh, Lexmoto for a few weeks now. I've been using it just to get around the island a bit and I've done a couple of little trips on it and it's now time for me to give you the review. Okay, let's do the controls first because they are very simple. On the left hand side, obviously, clutch. We've got the high beam, low beam, indicators, horn, oh. <laughs> and we have a switch here which is the hazards because this bike has hazards. I will note that the switch itself doesn't look like it really belongs on a bike, it's not that sort of switch, but um, it works and obviously it's waterproof because Lex most of themselves have been riding this thing through rivers before I had it. <laughs> So obviously that's all fine. Uh, so that's that side and obviously throttle, kill switch. Uh, this is just the lights, side lights, and just leave it on. <laughs> uh, and then the start button, throttle. As you can see, you've got your speed round here. You've got your trip, because you've got a reset there. And you've got your total miles here. We've got a fuel gauge here with five bars on it. A rev counter on this side. Then you've got the neutral light. And then the gear, it has a gear position. And it goes one, two, three, four. But it's, it's that still, it doesn't like changing kit, no bike would. So that's basically everything up there. We have a side stand and a centre stand. I'll put it on the side stand. Now, like with a couple of other Lexmotos, these are non-returning foot pegs, but these are a lot more solid and they do actually stay down. You don't tend to kick them up. Uh, this bike comes with a kick start and with an electric. Obviously that's the rear brake. Very solid. Not the best looking thing, but this bike I should point out at this point in time is twelve, thirteen hundred pounds. It's one of the cheaper bikes that Lexmoto makes, and you can see that in places. Um, the swing arm, for instance, isn't really a swing arm; it's more of a bar, just a straight tube with everything else on the end of it. You can just see it through there. It's perfectly fine. It just doesn't look great because it's a very cheap design. But then the bike's very cheap. This is the thing. You have to keep that in mind. It's one of the cheaper bikes they make. It's got nice little features, like the indicators are integrated into the fairing here, so you don't have any indicators sticking out, they're just built in. The seat's very comfortable, good feeling seat. The seat is uh, easily removed by doing the key down here, popping this out. And so that gives you access to underneath the seat where there's some the electric joins between the tail and everything. And the battery's just here. And how did I do this? I've done this once before. You just basically pull. And there you go. You've got access to your battery in seconds. There we go. And so, with just one key and a few moments, you can actually get to the battery. The forks and the suspension on this bike are perfectly adequate, they're nothing special. They don't necessarily give you brilliant feedback and all those sorts of things, but they do get you over the bumps, okay? That's so this bike is kind of, it's a rugged commuter. I don't say that it is an off-road bike. I know it's got knobblies on it. I know it looks like you could, and you can. But the suspension is not, it hasn't got enough travel in it, and it's too firm, really, for off-road. But you can do it. And light off-roading, like, you know, general green lanes, perfect. No problem. So, yeah, the cheaper things show through with the swing arm and, and with the forks and the suspension. Um, and just a few other bits. But generally... It's a solid bike. Tank, that's somewhere to talk about. One of the cheaper signs on the tank, as you can see, is just pressed in. There's, there's nothing really too much to it. Very cheap cap. And although it does work, if you were to overfill this bike, which is quite possible because the, the fill level seems to be quite a lot lower than the fill hole, 
and there's no guide to tell you where to and not to fill it up to. In the manual, it does say not to overfill over a certain point. If you do, and it's upright, when you turn it on its side, fuel will come out of there. That will happen with some other bikes as well. I've looked into it, brands, all sorts, it happens. But just basically don't overfill your tank, very important. So as I mentioned, side stand, and it also has a center stand, like so. It has this mock carbon fiber front fender, which, you know, it is large, I will say that, so it should stop all of the mud flinging up at you. Um, not really sold on the on the carbon fiber effect, but then I suppose if it was just flat plastic, it would have looked a bit weird. It does fit in better like this. Um, the exhaust is massive and very, very, very quiet. So let's go for a ride. I suppose the question is, can he kick it? Yes, he can. <laughs> yeah, it's very bouncy. Oh, because the suspension's quite firm and it's, as I say, very much not an off-road suspension. But it can put up with a bit of rough stuff. Oh. Let's get off the road. I don't know what I think of the tyres being knobblies on what is going to be used as a road bike. It, it doesn't help grip on roads. Does it work on the grass? Kind of, it slips around a little bit. But this bike, in the way that it's not designed to do these things, but it kind of can, makes it massive fun. <laughs> God. So we can do a little bit of off-roading, a little bit of green laning, a bit of fun. Uh, go to Lex Moto's channel and check out them riding it through a river. It's this exact bike. Oh yeah, and the turning circle is very, very tight. So now we need to know what the bike's like on the road, and I'll get to that in a second. There is something I'll point out that I forgot to mention during when I was talking about the clocks. The Speedo, see this 2040, 60, 80, that is kilometres miles an hour is on the inside which is in orange and it's very difficult to see um, it would have been better if that was the other way around but yeah it's just the way it is it's one of those little things you can't really control it's not the fastest 125 out there at all it's not the slowest i wouldn't say either but it certainly feels a little less sophisticated a little less punchy than say the adrenaline um, and that's fair enough because the adrenaline is quite a lot more money Still not a lot, but quite a lot more than this, which goes to show how cheap this thing actually is. But I'm sat here doing 40, I'm comfortable, when it's doing it, fine. Which is all that you really need out of a 125. The handling doesn't feel massively responsive or um, confidence giving, and the reason for that is the tyres. They slide a little bit if you're not careful. I mean, they can do everything you need them to do. They don't have the same sort of feel you get from a road tyre. The very basic suspension on top of that doesn't help too much on that. But as I say, for me, I see this bike as being utilitarian. Yes, it looks all right. You know, it's got a few styling flares, but nothing too much. But it's mostly about getting your body from A to B. And for that, it does great. And it's at a very cheap price, and you can't really say too much. It's, you know, £1,300 new on the road and you get a warranty with that and all sorts. Brakes, let's try the rear brake out. Let's really try the rear brake out. Yep, it'll lock up all right. You have to press on it quite firmly, which is good. There's no one behind me, let's try the fronts. Ooh, you could hear the novels starting to uh, turn over there. Can you hear it? It's like but it didn't let go. The difference between fourth and fifth on this bike isn't huge again. Uh, fifth is basically an economy gear. Uh, but as I say, it'll do about 60. Here's a little bit of me riding it a little bit more spiritedly. Rabbit! <laughs> Thank you.
So as I say, it's utilitarian, but it is also fun. It's certainly not a really quick bike that you're really gonna fly around corners on because those tires, you know, they let go a little bit because they're novelties and that happens. But then when you get the opportunity to get to a bit of, you know, a bit of mud, have a little bit of fun, all the better for them. I think I once got 70 out of it, but I think I had a bit of a tailwind. But you know, 60, it's saying, it's doing it. As I say, the build quality seems very solid. It is cheaper in a few places. The places that they've saved money in design, it hasn't necessarily reduced the actual build quality. It's still built well, but it's to a simpler design. And less steps in manufacturing makes things cheaper. The fuel gauge isn't massively accurate. It seems to jump up and down a little bit, but it does give you a rough idea of how much fuel you've got. And when it gets down to a couple of bars, you're gonna have so long to get to the fuel station anyway that you'll be fine. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I've got to fit this in, height. I'm six foot four, as you may or may not know. And I actually fit this bike fine. Yes, it is a little bit wee, it's a little bit small, but I can fit on it, I'm comfortable. So when you're one of these people and you're looking for a bike, consider one of these. If you've got a little bit more money, I'd say go for the adrenaline. But otherwise, it's good. So there you go, that's my review of it. Thanks for watching. I have other reviews on Lex Motos. If you'd like to take a moment to check them out, please do. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. Yeah, don't tell Lex Moto that happened. We could go through the street. Oh.